Hello everybody, welcome back to some more Lord of the Rings Online. We are here at Eckad you 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 will don't really know how to say that, and it's been a long time since I've been here, so if I did ever say it right, then I've forgotten how to do that. Uh yeah, we're finally back, hopefully uh, a little bit of a better schedule. Um quite frankly without going back into it or going into it too much. Um work started back up. And uh, it's it's a lot more than I had thought it was going to be a lot more draining. So uh, there was that. And then every other day that I have a chance to record is when the servers go down. So uh, unfortunately, not really had a chance to be here. But we are back. Hopefully going to be more consistent now. So uh, getting into it, we apparently have our four summer festival tokens converted into 12 farmers fair tokens. I don't think that's ever happened before, which is a little bit weird. But we also have the farmer fair quest. Um, I don't have enough inventory space. Of course I don't, because it's me. Um, I, I don't really know. I need to really sort out my inventory. Um, those are traps. That's a stat tone box. I didn't even realize I had that. Um, assortment of dwarf candles. They can also go. Why not? Let's finish that. We're not really going to worry about the map, so we're also going to get rid of them anyway. Uh, but 200k XP is always nice. We also, also have our Hobbit gift of the day and of the week. Uh, 50 value experience plus a major potion of morale, which I don't think I've ever gotten before. Uh, clearly not because it's not there. And for our gold is going to be 200 value experience plus a um, layer and skill deed tome for 90 minutes, which uh, I need to get rid of these. They're not really supposed to be on this character right now, um, but it's always nice. Plus we also have that. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, yeah. I should probably transfer this to a different character, but that's actually really good. To um, 200 veteran experience plus that is always nice to see. But Mithrandir, you are here. We need to talk to you and complete Sword and the Stone Maiden. Faramir, I must ask that you not pepper me with questions. Okay, so is it going to be like uh, similar to what we were doing before, where we're like in the past having a story told to us? These are the halls of memory, where the words of Vowen give shape to deeds from long ago. Hold your questions, Faramir. Okay, so we're just back here. That's fine. Um, when we last left, Vowen and his companions, they ventured to the Grey Mountains. Let's turn our attention to Ered Mithrin and pick up the thread of that tale. So that's this way. Last time we came here, this was already unlocked. So, I don't know why that's the case. What else must might we learn? Are we just going to just go through and he's going to follow us? Or... No? Okay. I do love the look of this place. It's really nice. Like, the, the concept of it and just the general look is always nice to see. Okay, he's just going to be that guy that shows up. Cool. That's really loud. For three years, Vernon and his new companions have ventured linked for the breadth of the uh, Grey Mountains and all the reaches of Misty Mountains. Hunting down the remaining vestiges of Angmar and bring battle to the evils dwelling in Gundabad. Uh, never did they know defeat in the triumphs emboldened Prince Aena. He remembered a promise he had made before, intent on seeing it fulfilled. He invited his companions to make the southward journey to his home to Gondor. They would stay for a time in Minas Anor, his city was then called, or as his city was then called, and plan the occasion for their next victories. Seems to just like stay at the entrance and then <laughs> just teleport in front of us because he has that power and he doesn't share that with us. But we have not been this far before. Vowen does not record the name of the tavern, might have been the Merry Swan. Well, if that gives us a nice little bit to place it, that's fine. Yes, I believe it may have been the Merry Swan. Again, I'm using striking his beard. Actually, I'll do that.
really eerie music here. So, Halanon, I think that's how it's written slash said, it's the guy that we we saw that story of death and before where Ogre Call came in, killed everybody but him after they, like, so that someone would have, uh, you know, be able to tell the story and then keeps leaving those uh, shields around, if I remember correctly, around Gondor. Um, so it was that. And then these guys want to kill him for him. Uh, kill Ogricor for Han uh, Halanon or Han Hanalon, whichever it is. We clearly know that that's not being achieved. Cause I'm pretty sure the Captain of the Pit is still alive. <laughs> okay. Uh, the plans were made and the kept secret from Ern is all but Ern is banned. Even his father, the king, did not know what they had intended. Vowen and his uh, said this of their departure. Pleasant weather, few clouds, warm but not uncomfortable. Left the city without incident. Uh, Silmathar thinks. Uh, so highly of our chance that he believes the prince will be made king upon our successful return. Gandalf frowns. It was not to be. If they indeed had met the Merry Swan, they should have left all traces of merriment behind them. Well, it doesn't look quite merry when you get into here. <laughs> oh. It's it's weird. It looks like it's kind of like infesting almost, but obviously it's just supposed to be like. The transition between because this is memories and stuff. Beggar believes that they thought it would be so easy. I can read the admonish uh, admonishment in Bowen's word. Born from late wisdom, too late it is with reluctance he draws us on to Durthang. It's been a while since we've been there. Here we are again. Fine weather was our last uh, of our last departure. Did not last. Gandalf read solemnly. Uh, experience in Mordor was Blake. Who'd have thought? To hear Vo and Talat, nothing went right for them once they passed into that land. The fortress was once called Durthang. They become more inhospitable with transformation into Durthang. Uh, it was more well defended than the adventurers expected in the face of strong opposition in the very beginning. Silmathar soon changed his opinion of their fortunes, receiving a leg wound that caused him a great deal of pain and put a limp in his step. They found no sign of Ogrecor within the fortress, and their dream of slaying the captain of the pit had faded. Tempered, uh, tempers in the fellowship ran hot, and had dulled his sword on a thick hide of a mountain troll, and with each combat the blade weakened further, at last it snapped, and the prince of Gondor was left weaponless. Can't you easily just, like, take a sword of someone you've killed? I mean, a troll maybe not, but... Uh, you know, orcs, even if it's like a little axe, you know. Yeah, there's a sword right there. Take it. At least he listened to me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not going to be like I'm sure the the metals and stuff in it and the forging of the blade is not exactly going to be the greatest. But I mean, our legendary weapons have been dropped from enemies, so <laughs> logic there, you know. Uh, the adventurers knew they could not reclaim the fortress without first slaying Ugrakov, but for us. Uh, for as long as he eluded them, Durthang would remain the property of Mordor. Their spirits low, they resolved to leave. And that, Vowen tells us, is that when they felt a new presence among the battlements. Oh, Ogrecor is coming, I think. Or Uridani. Pretty sure that's Uridani. Yeah.
So Magaldir is dead, and everybody else has left. Uridani was here. I only really guessed it was Uridani because he said, and the stone maiden, and the sword bit we'd already found. But it looks like we're done for now. So the survivors are in his band, returned to Minas Anor, defeated and mourning the loss of a friend. Somatar's hopes that they had set forth did not come past. Indeed, King Aenil, uh was more uh, rough than he had ever seen. He forbade his son from leaving the city without his consent to Vone's eyes. The prince was made a prisoner, and every day the flame of Erna's rage grew hotter still. Erna met with Vowen and his knights in secret to weave elaborate plots of revenge against those blamed for the death of Magaldir, Urdani stone maiden, for the deed itself in Ogrofri's absence in Durthang. If he had been there, Vowen writes, the whole adventure would have gone differently. The prince is sure of it. I see this. Uh, I see in this account it much is familiar. No, not the deeds themselves, for I've never seen any record of this doomed expedition to reclaim Durthang in the text of Gondor, but I'm familiar with the description of Aenor, son of Aenil II. Even the known records of his disposition describe Aenor as life, in life as bold, brash, and reckless. I wonder if he remains so as Mordorif and now as Gothmorg. Uh, that's enough for now, and Faramir, I trust you trade. Oh, yeah, Faramir's here. I trust you pay attention as well for these matters that concern you closely. For this foe now lurks upon the very edge of your lands, and in a city that is demand uh, that will demand your protection and that of your king once it's retaken. All right, let's get our flowy names back on. But Faramir, that is quite a tale. It is. I've done a few of those now. Uh, once uh, one day you need to tell me where you found this curious tome. It was hidden in uh, behind a secret door in a dwarf's house in a place I can't remember the name of. Iron something. Right? Ered Mithrin. And then we went Dale, and then Iron Hills. Yarn first. I know it was Iron something. I remember. I can't remember the name of the guy, but it was the, like, grandfather of a dwarf we found that was having a go at another dwarf. It was very weird. It was very weird. Um, how come you tell, uh, you came to tell the tale of uh, yeah, King Erna. I couldn't read that word for a second. They not even so for the use, not yet king, but still a little as recorded of the years before he followed as far Aelnil to the throne. So to find such an account in this book bearing the mark of Mordor is troubling to me. The Erna's doomed adventure of the Citadel, now called Sturthang, has brought to mind a recent conversation. Baragon spoke to me with some interest in that place. Speak to my captain and ask him what happened to the man with the shield, a man of Ithilien he was, but I confess I do not know his name. He was here at the camp, but I have not seen him since I returned. Uh, here we are. Hello. There's a guy with a shield. The man with the shield? Aye, I remember him. I did not much like the look of him. Is it someone... What did he name himself? Placing... Arnoth. He repaired it to the best he could with leather straps. The thing is barely honed together. It looked like it was fall apart the first blow of an enemy weapon. He responds well. I sent him to conduct an inventory of the rations and water for the camp. He's not reported back to me. Go find him. He should be somewhere by the tent. Is it... Like a guy from Ugracor, like under the the thing of Ugracor, like uh, uh, I can't think of the word under the command of Ugracor, uh, placing down a shield. Cause that was his thing, right? That he was placing down shields. Um, yeah, he was placing down shields to like remind everybody of what happened. Work is never done, is it? Uh, I would not have it any other way. I suspect neither would you. But you are here seeking the Athelian Ranger with a broken shield. I wonder why he carried it around with him. I did not ask. He seemed particularly interested in the map on the table over there, just to the west. Yeah, he's totally a spy. Anos Dagger is embedded in the map marking a location northwest of Minas Morgul. Travel to the location Anos marked on the map, northwest of Minas Morgul, up in the mountains. So, ah, okay, so we already had that place unlocked, I think. Faith alone will not stop the enemy. Tarum? Yeah. Cool. Good thing I got that one, didn't I? So, it's not quite at the camp, it's through this area here. 
And then there's actually this path here, um, which previously, or like I know for a fact at least, should be right now, um, it's like blocked in. Like you can't get there because there's stones in the way. So I'm assuming at some point we unlock that. Because there's a whole area here, even with like a relic and forge master and stuff. And spiders. Good old spiders. Right, let's dismount so we can at least do this. So I've booted footprints to lead to the southeast. Did Anoth come this way? Yeah, I still feel like it's either gotta be an apparition sort of thing, like a ghostly thing. Because of the, like. I'm, I'm really hung up on the shield. Like, they're mentioning the, the shield so much. Um, and that's like his defining trait. That I feel like, especially after we just had that thing with Durthang and uh, Ogrecore and stuff, that something's just got to be up. Um, and it's either somehow like someone serving Ogrecore with that shield, being like someone who's going to place it down, or it's just some sort of apparition trying to take us somewhere. So he is quite a ways, ways away still. We'll kill this one and we'll just get on our steed and then run it, sort of thing. Be easier than taking out every single enemy. As much as it helps with uh, the deeds. And hopefully we just don't get dismounted. That would be ideal. But obviously my war steed has still got the same amount of health as it always did and these enemies are always doing more damage. So, there is always now that, yeah, see one hit, 4,800, like, we are just getting, not, like, completely ruined, but, hopefully I can just get these guys, I'll, like, I'll get back to him in a second, I'm just gonna try and lose the guys on us. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll just take this one out since he's... Not wanting to, you know, follow us, but he's also not wanting to, like, run away. And also, it's an easier kill than the others. So, we're all good. Cool. And off. I see that Hundalar has not yet sunk a dagger in your back. Uh, I urge you now, as I urge you then, keep Aeols in the wily arm's length. Oh, do we have Anoth? Was Anoth someone we knew before? I can't remember. It's been so long. Um... You ask Anoth why you failed to complete the inventory of which Dagoras entrusted him and the range of grimaces. You make a point sharply and it wounds me. I feel bad about checking duty, but I had a little choice in the matter. I overheard from some of the scouts that Ugrakor himself had been seen in the west of Sirith Ungol. He has made, uh, made it for Minas Morgul. I have not given up my quest to avenge the Thanduim. Uh, I'll make the captain of the pit pay for his crimes against them, though I thought, uh, though they'd be a thousand years distant, let Ugrakor fear the descent, a descendant of, oh yeah, he, yeah, I remember now. Hanalon, the survivor. I will let no other task hinder me in my vengeance, but it seems the reports were false. He's not come himself. As far as I've seen, though, the orcs stalk among the crags. We search for the sign of him at the path, and then I will return to my duties. Cool. So, we'll do this one, and then we'll be finished for the day, most likely, but we're just going to have a little check around, see if Agricor is here, and uh, assuming he's not, then we'll just travel back, finish this quest, and be done with it. Because I don't want to just end it with being like, it was like 17 minutes I think we were spent in that instance it's just kind of not really good for an episode is it so I think it's uh, good that we're making at least some other progress on it it's a mangled orc I'm going to do a little loop around if I can get up here well enough. That, oh, you're just gonna move. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm guessing that is our thing we're searching for. Don't want to aggro both of them, especially. Dead orc bears Ogrecore's symbol and carries a report for his master. Let's bring said report back. And, uh, oh, he's gonna be like, yeah, he's here then. Her, 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 her. Right. Oh god. I thought they wouldn't aggro me. Hmm. 
I always thought they just like threatened to attack first. I guess I was wrong. Hopefully, can you just like not? Can you just like give up with the aggro, please? I thought that was levitating for a minute. It really threw me off. Okay. What does Ugracord's captain have to say to his master? Uh, the words are full of fear. It seems the masters of Mordor have more worries than King Elsa or Prince Faramir alone, or indeed the two of us. They betray, uh, if fear the treachery of their allies. Listen, if Gothmog has found a weapon to use against Spiderfolk and their mistress, he keeps it himself in the tower. The promise of such a weapon will surely draw Ogrecord to Minas Morgul. Let's be grateful that the Ungoladane did not say every member of the Orc raiding party for word of this should still reach the captain of the pit through the survivors of that band. He will come for Gothmog and for this weapon, and I will be ready. The Thandrum will be avenged. You should bring this report back to the camp. Tell him what you learned, and Ogrecord knows the Fenner Ghost is closed to him. Instead, he sends small raiding parties to Imlad Morgul by way of the Toric Ungol, as I suspected. A lot of words. I'm sure they'll know what it means. Hopefully, I can use Desperate Flight and get out of here. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, well, that nearly went really wrong. I think I can probably make my way down here. Like. Kinda. Nope, that's an instant death. Okay, I thought I would be able to make my way down. Apparently not. And <laughs> we just may go our way back here. Um, did we ever get... Estaladalan? Yeah, let's get that. Right, that took a little bit of a <laughs> doing. But, right, let's uh, get ourselves hmm. sorted. So, what we... You've injured yourself in the fall. You've been incapacitated by misadventure and you succumb to your wounds. Oh, I don't know if that's just... It looked like it doubled up our deaths, but I'm pretty sure we only died once. Right. Uh, and strikes one duty and seeks to avoid punishment by providing useful tidings. I've seen it before. I'm not as a command, but I do not play my place to levy judgment. Uh, but I would caution him against pursuing vengeance with such a single-minded purpose. He would not be the first to make such a mistake, nor, I fear, the last. But his report does help me piece together something that I believe Gothmog has been up to for a while, while we occupied with other matters. After the defeat of his armies at Pelennor, Gothmog fled to Imlad Morgul. Okay, so that's literally just an agility increase. Everything else stays the same. That's fine. Um, right, I'm gonna leave that so that we can remember it in the next episode, because otherwise I will forget what everything is going on. But that's gonna be it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.